um, episode 39, episode 39 as we continue with our study through the book of Solomon, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. I'm so excited. Gospel Prophets 39. Hallelujah. So, if you missed Gospel Prophets 38, I was introducing to us, you know, this book as a book that will teach us intimacy, but also to help us understand the language and the reason as to why this book was written, because you don't take it from the literal interpretation. If you take it from the literal interpretation carnally, you're going to miss out the sacred, you know, the, 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 the intimacy, the, the message of the Spirit through this move. So it's very important that you go back and listen to Gospel Prophets 38 to give you the understanding. Because if you don't listen to Gospel Prophets 38, many of you might miss me uh, because of the language that is used in, in this book. Okay, so we're moving you from the literal interpretation of things to a higher dimension of biblical interpretation, not the first dimension. Okay, so if, if you're still in the first dimension, for you, you take it literally, you're going to miss out on very many important things. So go back to Gospel Prophets 38, then you can follow the sequence of things. But this is a book that is going to teach us intimacy. And if you desire intimacy with God, you are in the right place at the right time. And in the right ministry, gospel prophets. Hallelujah. So, <clears throat> today we are focusing on verse, just one verse. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 2 only. Because I believe that the language here is so deep. And I just want to expound on the meaning. Because very many people have failed to interpret exactly what this book, what this verse is saying. And so today I'm going to give us the opportunity to just a little bit expound on its meaning and how it does apply to us. Hallelujah. The Shulamite woman says, remember this is a, a poem or a song between the Shulamite woman, the bride, and the beloved Solomon, the king. You understand? It's in Gospel Prophets 38. So she's, she opens up by saying, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. Let him kiss me eh, with the kisses of his mouth. Eh, eh. What does this mean? Now, if this found somebody who's carnal, it's very dangerous. <clears throat> Are you understanding me? It's very dangerous. They're going to miss out on the information. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, what does that mean? And so I'm laboring the whole episode to explain this verse to and bring this to our understanding in our present day. All right, now, it's interesting to note that this is the first prayer request. This is the first desire made known to the groom by the Shulamite woman, who is the bride. The very first thing she's desiring, the very first thing she's asking of everything, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. I believe that this is an experience that every child of God should desire above the necessities of this life. It is something that you should desire from Jesus above the car, above marriage, above the job, above finances. But this is something that many Christians have never desired. It is something that many Christians have never prayed for. It is something that very many Christians have never asked. Every time I go out once in a while, we ask for prayer requests. You never hear this thing come out. Okay. So, she is not asking for a visa. She is not asking for a breakthrough. She is not asking for his wealth. She is asking for the kisses of his mouth. Very important you follow me through. 
She's not asking for a Zakameza. <laughs> you, you, you ladies understand what I'm talking about. She's not asking for a Zakameza. No, she's asking for the kisses of his mouth. Imagine a wife, you husband. A wife is not asking for your money. Your wife is not asking for whatever it is. Your wife is only asking for the kisses of your mouth. If you have such a woman, you have found gold. Am I really making sense? She's not in there for money. She's in there for you. Hallelujah. Now, I felt like I should start like that to just remind you that that's a first prayer request and we're going to understand why. If we go to the Hebrew word for let him kiss me, the Hebrew word there is nashak. Nashak. Okay. Nashak is a, a, a primitive root word that, that denotes the idea of fastening up. Okay. Fastening up. Okay. Hold something, hold something in, in a place, something that holds you in a place. Okay, so he says, let him kiss me. He's talking about, I want, I want him to hold me. Okay, I want him to, I want something that I can hold on to. You understand what I'm saying? And the Hebrew word there of your mouth, it is peh, P-E-H. Okay, from pa, the mouth, as a means of blowing. Walk with me clearly. As a means of blowing. So when he said, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, he's talking about the means of blowing. Let him blow me. Okay. Okay. Now, figuratively, this means speech. Walk with me. Very important you we start this journey like this. Figuratively, pair means speech. So if you are to define of your mouth, to define pair in Hebrew, it is this mouth is an organ of speech. When somebody's talking about the mouth, they are talking about an organ of speech. Are you here? are you walking with me? Now, when she says blow me with your kisses. She's actually saying, blow me with your speech. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. In other words, blow me with your kisses. Blow me with your speech. Are, we, are, are you now getting me? Blow me with your speech. In other words, speak to me. Let him speak to me. Let him speak to me. Let him blow me with his words. Beloved, Blow me with your words. Blow me with your speech. This is the interpretation in the spiritual realm. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now you understand. It's not that mouth you're talking about. It is the speech. It, it is the voice. Blow me with your voice. I want to hear your voice. But how many of us actually have ever heard the voice of God? How many of us have actually paid heed to the voice of God? How many of us have desired to hear God speak? That once we come to the presence of God, we are saying, blow me with your voice. I want to hear you because what God has to say to me in the presence is far more important than what I have to say to him. Because many of us come into the presence of God and all that we are doing in the presence is to let God hear our voice. Lord, I want this. Lord, do for me this. Lord, do for me this. But you, you live out the presence and you've not understood. You've not even heard what God is saying. Your desire is not to, have, not to have the kisses of his mouth. Your desire is to actually have, he, have to let him have the kisses of your mouth. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Let me just interpret it that way. But how many of us go into the presence of God with the desire of, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Blow me with your voice. Blow me with your speech. Lord, I want to hear you speak to my life. I've come to the presence of God. I'm spending one hour, but I've just come to actually have the kisses of your mouth. Speak to me, Lord. I want to hear your voice. How many people do that? Now, are you seeing the, lead? Are you seeing the interpretation of this portion of Scripture? Are you seeing how intimate this thing is? 
Okay. Song of Solomon chapter 5 verses 13. She says again, His cheeks are like a bed of spices, banks of scented, of scented herbs. His lips are lilies, dripping liquid mire. I like that. His lips are lilies, dripping liquid mire. His lips. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Of course she's talking. See, of course now she's taking it deeper and talking about his lips. Because these lips are wet. When you're kissing someone, okay, those that are married, hallelujah, and, the, and those that have kissed before, <laughs> somebody's laughing. But the lips are usually wet, right? Now, for those who have never kissed before, this is a, you may not understand this, but sort of the mouth, the lips become wet in the process of what? Kissing, right? And they begin to drop some. You understand? So he's saying, his lips are lilies, dripping liquid. Because there's certain liquid that drops during the process of kissing. The lips become wet, okay? So there is something that his lips drip. When he says, kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, there is something that his lips drop. You understand? Or drip. Okay. And we see it in Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 13. His lips are lilies dripping liquid mire. Now, the message version would say, His face is rugged. His beard smells like sage. His voice, his words, warm and reassuring. Now, where they're saying lips, okay, they're saying his voice, his words, warm and reassuring. Are you hearing me? Are you walking with me? So this thing that the lips actually drop of this beloved are his voice, his words, which are warm and reassuring. Are you walking with me? When the Hebrew word for dripping, when he says his lips are lilies dripping, the Hebrew word there for dripping is nautaf. Okay? Nautaf. Nautaf means, of course, to drop. It means to drip. But more importantly, it means to, to discourse. Okay, you're having a conversation with someone. Okay, figuratively it means to speak by inspiration. So when he says dripping, she's actually meaning speaking by inspiration. You understand? His lips are lilies speaking by inspiration. Are you seeing the intimate realities of what I'm talking about today? I hope somebody's understanding because this is this is something that I want you to teach and let you understand. Now, in 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 Song of Solomon five thirteen that I've just read, she was giving an answer to what people who had asked her about how special is your beloved. They wanted to know how special because she was looking for her beloved, and they asked her, "But tell us something special about this man that you're looking for." Then she says. In verse, in verse 13, his cheeks are like a bed of spices, banks of scented herbs. His lips are lilies dripping liquid mire. So it, it was one of those things. It was among those, those special things that make her beloved special. What was that? His voice, his words are warm and reassuring. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So if his words are, are warm, his voice are reassuring, that's why she desires the kisses of what? Of his mouth. You see, every time that they are having a discourse with each other, okay, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth because I'm still amplifying this. She is, she is reassured because he speaks by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Because it's, dripping means to speak by inspiration. That's why she desires a discourse. She desires a conversation. Because every time this man is speaking to her life, this man is speaking by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is between you and Jesus Christ. Every time I talk about the beloved, it is Jesus, the Shulamite woman. I'm talking about the church, you the church, and Solomon, the Christ. Are you understanding? Are you understanding me? So, you say, so when she says, his lips are lilies dripping liquid mire. You as a church are saying the lips of Christ are lilies. They drip liquid. 
he speaks by inspiration which is the inspiration of the holy spirit that's why i desire the kisses of his mouth because of what is coming out of his lips inspiration by the holy ghost am i really making sense okay the bible tells us that all scripture is given by inspiration of god you understand now you're getting it <laughs> in second peter chapter 1 verses 19 from verses 19 the bible says and so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Verses 21, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So as you're reading the Bible, you're, you're reading that which that that which men spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit as they were inspired by the holy spirit so the word dripping is nataf means to speak by inspiration that's why you desire his lips that's what they drip you desire his lips that's what they drip because every time you're having a conversation with the Holy, I mean, with Jesus Christ, every word that comes out of him is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Every time that you seek to read the Bible, and you're reading the Bible, every time you read the Bible, Jesus is communicating to you. You're having a discourse. You're having the kisses of his mouth. He's speaking to you. And everything that comes out of interpretation is by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That hearing by the Word of God as some, something that whispers to you as you are by the word, as you are reading, there is a certain voice, a certain thought that comes and whispers to you. That is the dripping that I'm talking about. This is very important for those who read their Bible because there's a difference between Logos and Rema. Logos is the written word I am reading, okay? For, for God so loved the world, blah, blah, blah. That is Logos. But Rema is the now word, that interpretation that comes as you're reading, that voice that comes as, as you're reading. That is, the, that is the process called dripping. His lips are liquid, dripping, inspired by the Holy Spirit. So as you are reading, what is that other voice that speaks to you? Hearing comes by the word. You are by the word and something drops into your spirit. That is exactly what I'm talking about. I hope I'm making myself very clear. So you who is reading the Bible, yes, you're reading, but is it dropping? <laughs> is it dripping? Hallelujah. So what we read, what we read is something that was under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This is the dripping that she is talking about. Very important. Please understand me. And we are going through a Bible study, right? Now. I so much believe that this is one of the reasons we need to practice meditation in his presence. I really believe it. The, contempl the contemplation of things, you contemplate things, come in the presence of God and just meditate. Some of you have never taken time to meditate. Just come in the presence and shut up. And think about that scripture. Think about the goodness of God. Think about the love of God. Think about that word that is always coming into your spirit. Have a relationship with it. Read something and come back and meditate. One, ten minutes, twenty minutes, thirty minutes. As you do that, you'll be amazed by the things that Jesus will be dripping in your spirit, will be dropping in your spirit by the spirit of revelation. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? So if you have meditation in his presence, the two of you will have a meaningful conversation, the kisses of his mouth. I'm coming. I'm coming. That is what you, that's what you're talking about, the kisses of his mouth. You're having a meaningful conversation with each other. Not many of us can have that in the presence of God. Because every time we go into the presence of God, we are transacting. That is, that is nonsense. We Christians should get out of that nonsense. That every time we come to the presence, to kusaba, and to kusaba, makama mpachino, mpachino. That's a wrong mentality. You understand what I'm saying? Look at the presence as an experience of having the kisses of his mouth. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verses 16. Again, the Shulamite woman says, 
His mouth is most sweet. Eh? Yes, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. His mouth is most sweet. Kiss me. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Why? Because his mouth is most sweet. It's the most... Hallelujah. It's like, it's like a wife who loves her husband and loves that process. His mouth is the most sweet. Of course, you understand. That's intimacy. His mouth is most sweet, she says. Why? Do you see why? His lips drip lilies. In verse, so in, 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 in verse 13. Are you seeing it? Are you seeing why now she says that his, 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 his lips drip lilies, they drop like liquid? Because his mouth is most sweet. Conversation. So, Song of Solomon chapter 5 verse 16 is very important. But the Amplified Version says, His voice and speech are exceedingly sweet. Wait a minute. Where he talks about the mouth, the Amplified Version says, His voice and speech. Now you're getting it. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. What is that? His voice and speech. Hey! Are you getting me? So, his voice and speech are likened to the mouth. You see that? His mouth is likened to his voice and speech. So, and you're talking about the kisses of his mouth, right? The kisses of his voice, the kisses of his speech. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. In other words, let him kiss me with the kisses of his voice. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his speech. That is what he drops. He drops his voice. He drops his word. He drops his speech. Revelation. Revelation. Am I really making sense? As you are reading, as you're reading John chapter 3, la 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 la, he drops something in your spirit. That is the kisses of his mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, are you understanding what I am saying? Don't miss this. So the Amplified Version says, his mouth is most, I mean, his voice and speech are ex ex exceedingly sweet. Yes, he is altogether lovely. The whole of him delights and is precious. This is my beloved and this is my friend or daughters of art of Jerusalem. I love this. I hope you're understanding as I'm teaching us this. So every time that we talk about a man having good lips, okay, I would like to lick those lips. Uh -huh. Those women say, man, I like, I like his lips. Uh, very interesting that there, there are things that women can like in a man. And there are those who just who, who can just get into a relationship because of someone's lips. <laughs> very weird. I know someone is laughing. I just, what do you like about him? Mm, I like his lips. What are they meditating already? What meaningful conversation are they seeing? Are you understanding what I'm saying? So he said, I, 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 and she's like, I just want to lick them. Now, let's go spiritual. Okay, I would like to lick them. No, 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 no. You who is spiritual, you are actually saying, I would like to lick his lips, for in his lips are the drops of his speech. In his lips are the drops of his words. I would love to lick his speech. I would love to test his voice. I would love to hear his voice. I would love, I would love to test his speech. I would love to hear that's what it means. I, so even may I fall in love with Jesus because of his lips. Now, for you, lady, you fall in love with that man. You like that man because you want to have, you want to have a, a, a lip experience. You want to lick his lips. But for me, as, 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 as a church, as, 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 as a child of God, I want, I, this is why I love Jesus Christ. His lips are so sweet. His mouth is so sweet because they drop his speech, his word. Am I really making sense? <laughs> okay that's the meaning spiritual okay his voice and and speech are exceedingly sweet his words are inspiring they are warm his words are reassuring why wouldn't i want to lick his lips now you understanding what i'm saying why wouldn't i want to come to the presence of christ and just lick his lips because he's Mouth is the most sweet thing. You understand what I'm saying? 
the message version of song of solomon chapter 5 verse 16 says his words are key says you see that it has, he has now defined what his words are his words are kisses let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth that is his word his words are kisses his kisses words <laughs> everything about him delights me thrills me through and through that's my lover that's my man dear jerusalem sisters i have now painted a picture for you that actually his words are the kisses that we are talking about let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth in other words let him kiss me with his words let him kiss me with his words hallelujah if i lick his lips i'm actually licking his words if i lick his lips they they are dropping his word how many people are having that experience now isn't this what mary chose over martha you remember that story in luke chapter 10 where jesus had gone and entered a certain village and uh, a certain woman named martha welcomed him into her house and martha the bible tells us had a sister who was called mary but when jesus entered into that house what Ma what what mary did she decided to sit at jesus's feet and hear his word you can read that story in luke chapter 10 from verses 38 so she sits next to jesus christ to hear jesus christ speak now this Martha was not happy with it because Martha was distracted with much serving. She was very busy preparing this, doing this. I want to get food. I want to eat, preparing. But G Mary said, no, me, I would rather sit and hear what Jesus Christ is saying. But Martha was distracted by serving. And so she approached Jesus and said, Lord Jesus, but don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? You tell her to help me. Now, in Luke chapter 10, from verses 41, the Bible says, And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Verse 42, he says, But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, that good part, which will not be taken away from her. She has chosen that good part. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary chose the kisses of his mouth because she sat at Jesus' feet to hear his word. She chose the kisses of his mouth. That's why we go to church, because we are going to have the kisses of his mouth. That's why we come into the presence of God, because we have chosen the kisses of his mouth. How many people go to church with that kind of perspective? With, 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 with that kind of motive. How many people go to the presence of God? I told you this book is going to teach us intimacy. Do you actually have this experience? Okay. Have you chosen the kisses of his mouth? Ephesians chapter 5 verses 26, the message version, the Bible says, Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything it does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. Hallelujah. His words evoke her beauty. His words are designed to bring the best out of you. Let me tell you something. Listen to me, friends. The words of Christ evoke your beauty. The words of Christ are designed to bring the best out of you. You find a husband whose words are designed to tell her wife, I love you, you are the best and everything. It brings the best out of that wife. It evokes her beauty. Husbands, you should be able to tell your wives every day these beautiful words, I love you, you're the best. You know, find a way of affirming your wives every single day. This, this is you evoking beauty out of them. Okay. And bringing the best out of them. They'll cook for you the best meal that you Hey, I'm telling you. You understand what I'm saying? So... The words of Christ evoke our beauty. In other words, they call forth our emotions, our, our feelings, and our responses. It does that. This is why she says, your love is better than wine. Are you hearing that? Because she evoked her beauty and her emotions and responses. To evoke also means to call to mind. When we say his words evoke her beauty, those words call her to mind. His words call to mind who we are. That we are fearful and wonderfully made. Are you understanding what I'm saying? 
it, 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 it's, it's designed to bring the best out of us. That's why I desire the kisses of his mouth, his words, that they bring the best out of me. Me to just say, oh, God, tell me, you are blessed with every spiritual blessing. You are above only and not beneath. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. These things bring the best out of me. They bring the best out of me. The words of Christ. You shall overcome. You are blessed. You are righteous. You are healed. You are forgiven. You are a child of God. You are the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. These things bring the best out of me and they evoke the beauty that is in me. That's why most of you should desire the presence and hear the words of Christ. Read the Bible because it's the words. They are the words of Christ, the love story to you and they bring the best out of you. Am I really making sense? This is why we read and study the word. We don't go to the word to get a husband, to get a car. We read the word to allow his words to, ev to, to, to evoke beauty out of us and, uh, 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 and to bring the best out of us. This is why you should love the presence of God. This is why you should read the Bible more than anything else in your world because the words of Christ evoke beauty and they remind you who you are. They will always bring the best out of you when whatever circumstances that you're going through, somebody is going through a hard situation and all they need are the kisses of his mouth, a word from Christ out of the spirit of revelation. That's all you need. Are you hearing me? But listen to me, child of God. You are beautiful, child of God. You woman, you don't need that man to tell you, this come on you're beautiful you woman you don't need a, a man of god to tell you this you don't need a man to tell you that you're beautiful no 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 all you need are the kisses of his mouth to remind you of who you are come on come on you are beautiful you lady you are beautiful you woman you are beautiful you don't need me to tell you this you don't need that man to tell you this all you need are the kisses of his mouth to evoke the beauty to call to mind who you are Hallelujah. So that you don't, you don't enter marriage. You don't, you don't enter marriage to be complete from without. No, you enter marriage as one which is complete from within. Because you know Christ, you are complete in Christ. And Christ completes you. You don't need finances to complete you. You don't need a man to complete you. You don't need children to complete you. You don't need anything in this world to complete you because you are complete in Christ. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Very important. Find a lady or a man who are filled with the word of God. You'll find them complete. They know that they are, com they are complete in Christ. So they don't get into that marriage to be complete from without. Whether you do them good, whether you do this, it's okay. You understand. Such a person has found peace and joy and understands who they are because the words of Christ evoke beauty in them and they are designed to bring the best out of them. Very important. I would love to marry such a woman. Hallelujah. So, allow me to say this. All gospel, all gospel duty, gospel duty, gospel duty is summed up in our kissing the sun. That's our duty, kissing the sun. So that all gospel grace is summed up in his kissing us. I'll say it again. All gospel duty is summed up in our kissing the Son. So all gospel grace is summed up in his kissing us as the father of the prodigal kissed him when he returned a penitent. Now, in Psalms 2 verses 12, the Bible says, kiss the Son. Are you looking at that? Are you seeing that? Kiss the Son. Lest he be angry and you perish in the, in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Kiss the sun. That's your gospel duty, to kiss the sun. The gospel grace is when he kisses us. Am I really making sense? Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. That's the gospel grace. But also let us also kiss him. That's our gospel duty. It is important to understand what I've just said. So the word kiss in Psalms 2 is the same word used in Song of Solomon. Let him kiss me. So it's the same thing. So we're seeing gospel duty and we're seeing gospel grace. Your part and his part. So it's a kiss kiss. He kisses as you kiss, right? 
He kisses as you kiss, right? I, you understanding me? So, in as much as he kisses us, it's incumbent, it's necessary, it's pivotal that we kiss him too with our words. Now, listen, this is the mouth-to-mouth -mouth experience. Now I'm getting deeper as I close. It's a mouth to mouth experience. It is him talking to us face to face. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. In other words, let me have a mouth to mouth experience with a Christ. Let him have a f let, let me have a face to face experience with a Christ. But somebody said that if you see God face to face, you will die, right? Now you're understanding that we can actually see him face to face. <laughs> And you don't die. So we see him face to face. But this is the understanding. This is, now, this is very important. Now, when I say face to face, I'm not talking about the physical. Uh -uh. I'm talking about this thing that I've just shared with us. So you can have a face to face experience with the son. Because you can't kiss him without beholding his face. Am I really making sense? So, but they say, it. if you see me face to face, you will die. I've just shown you how even Moses had such an experience. The Bible says, when God was trying to retaliate back to Miriam and Aaron for disobeying Moses, he says in Numbers 12 from verses 6, walk with me, and he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. And I will speak unto him in a dream. If there is a prophet, I will speak to them in a dream or in a vision. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even, up, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall behold. Okay, with him will I speak, he says, mouth to mouth. Moses saw God face to face. He spoke to God face to face, mouth to mouth, and he didn't die. God is saying, Moses sees me face to face. And everything I say to him is perfectly clear. Because it is face to face. And the kisses of his mouth, right? He says, I speak to him intimately. You're seeing that? I speak to him in person. I speak to him in plain talk without riddles. And this very Moses ponders the very form of God. A mouth-to-mouth -mouth experience, a face-to-face -face experience, and he never died. This is exactly the interpretation of, of that portion of scripture and experience. Now, this is the experience the Shulamite woman is talking about in Song of Solomon, the kisses of his mouth, where God, where she sees Jesus face to face, okay, where Jesus speaks to, he, to her intimately, where Jesus speaks to her in person, where Jesus communicates to her in plain talk without riddles. It he speaks and she hears clearly, and she also speaks back because she hears clearly. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is experience, ladies and gentlemen, that she's talking about the kisses of his mouth. Very clear, very plain, that you hear God clearly. You know this is God. So the Hebrew word for face-to-face -face in Numbers 12 verses 8 is peh. You remember peh? It is the same word the bride used for the mouth. You understand what I'm, what I'm saying now? Now, are you seeing the correlation? The correlation of things. In other words, she's saying of your mouth, it is face to face. Mouth to mouth. That is, let him speak to me face to face. No, when she says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, she's actually saying, let him speak to me face to face. Now you understand what I'm talking about. I've now interpreted it. When she was saying, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, the Shulamite woman was saying, let Jesus speak to me. 
you are saying, let Jesus speak to me face to face. And this is an experience that every single one of us should have. Friends, this experience, the kisses of his mouth, having Jesus speak to us and we speak back to him face to face, this thing is higher, this is a higher realm than, than that of visions and dreams. Now, many of us are still stuck in visions and dreams. God only speaks to us in visions and dreams, but there is nothing outside that. This is higher. That you should move from the place of just allowing God to confirm to you things with only, if he doesn't speak to you in a vision, if he doesn't speak to you in a dream, then he, he has not spoken. No, get out of that realm and come to the place whereby he speaks to you face to face. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. That as you are by the word, you can hear him speak very clearly. He drops a thought. He drops a scripture. He drops something into your spirit and you also get it. And you spend hours and hours in the presence of God. Now, I want to push us from the place of, for me, God speaks to me in dreams and God speaks to me only in visions and you're feeling big about it. No, move from that place and say, for me, God speaks to me face to face. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is what you should desire. This is what should be your prayer request. <laughs> ah, la, 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 la. This is my prayer in this season. It's my prayer for us this week. This is the season that our ears need to be consecrated more than ever before. Shut all those usual voices your ears have been used to. Because those voices need to be starved so you can feed your spiritual ears for you to have a mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, a face-to-face -face experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't wait for the vision. Don't wait for the dream. Be by the word. Be by the word and he will speak. He'll drop a word that you need concerning your marriage. He'll drop a word that you need concerning your ministry. He'll drop a word that you need concerning that child. He'll drop a word that you need concerning your finances. He will do it. But be by the word. Okay? Listen to me, child of God. Esteem the kisses of his mouth above all the necessities of life. That experience with God. Esteem him. That face-to-face, mouth-to-mouth, the kisses of his mouth. Esteem that thing more than anything in this world. Let it be something that drives you into the presence of God. Let it be something that drives you to church. I just want to have the kisses of his mouth. Let it be something that wakes you up in the morning and you want to be by the word and as you are by the word, he drops and he sleeps. You understand? Are you kidding me, child of God? This is deep. I told you this book will teach you intimacy. It will teach you intimacy. Intimacy. So, there cannot be this experience without a drawing. There has to be a drawing which we shall look at next week in verses 4. When she says, draw me away, we will run after you. The king has brought me into his chambers. The king has brought me into his bed. Very important. There has to be a drawing. Something has to draw you. Because this, this song of Solomon, there is something drawing us into intimacy. Even as I speak right now, there is something that is drawing you to his word. That is trying to, something has been planted in your spirit and you desire the, the, the kisses of his mouth. So he says, draw me, verse 4. We shall see that next week. There's a deep mystery there. One thing must lead to another, right? From the kisses of his mouth, hallelujah, to fire the bed. Hallelujah. First fire in the bed. Again, if you go carnal, you're going to have a problem. Because I said from that, what do we do in his bed? Imagine you and your love. What do you do in your bed? Fire. But there's a mystery there. You're going to be amazed next week. There is a mystery there which we are going to unlock in the next episode. Very important because he has heard the lips. Now he says, draw me to your bed. Oh, from one level of intimacy to another. Very important. Very important. And we're going to look at that next week. I told you this thing is going to teach you intimacy. 
I promise you, if you really desire intimacy, your spirit is beginning, you're now being aligned to desire this thing. So allow me to conclude. How, what would, how would I conclude this thing? Because that's the thing that we should desire. John 3.16, we all know the portion of scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, but have eternal life. So Jesus came that you may have eternal life, right? That's the most important thing. The reason Jesus came is not that you may have get married. It's more than marriage. It's more than a car. It's more than finances. It's more than amassing wealth. He came that you may have eternal life. And John 17, 3 defines for us this everlasting life, this eternal life. He says, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So he defines, he came that you may have eternal life, and he defines eternal life as knowing God. So Jesus came that you may know God. Jesus came that you may know him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's one thing to know about someone. It's another thing to know someone. If you want to know somebody, you must have a relationship with them. I know about the president of Uganda, Museveni, but I don't know him. I don't know his favorite food. I don't know the time he goes to bed. I don't know because I don't have a relationship with him. For me to know him, I must have a relationship with him. Now, some of you don't even know, you, you know about your husband, but you don't know your husband. That, that, that's weird. Now, most of us know about Jesus Christ, but we actually don't know Jesus Christ. We are not experiencing the everlasting life that he came. So the most important thing in this world is to know God, is to have an intimate, vibrant, and relationship an intimate relationship with God. So the word there is intimate. Jesus came that you may have intimacy with him. As simple as that. That's a personal relationship. He came that you may have an intimate relationship with God. The kisses of his mouth. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So the end of the matter is that you may have an intimate relationship with him. The kisses of his mouth. The mouth-to-mouth -mouth experience. The face-to-face -face experience. Hallelujah. My question is, is your relationship with God growing? Is your relationship with God vibrant? Is your relationship with God intimate? If not, then make this your prayer. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for it is to this end that he came. Hallelujah. If I've, if I've taught very well, clap for me in the spirit. Hallelujah. It's because I am done. I am done. Ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what verse 2 means. Okay. Now, let's go to our culture. After listening to this audio, send it to a friend and tell them about the kisses of his mouth. Your experience with, with the kisses of his mouth. And invite them into this platform gospel prophets and if you are ble and if you and if this episode has blessed you I'm, I'm going to ask you to sow into it to sow into it if you're really really blessed and you can partner with us through gospel prophets and your partnership will help us to print the books that we can give out to very many people they your bread of life books okay you can partner and say this is for partnership go print these books pastor adrian or you can also sow into this episode if it has blessed you. So if you're here and you've never received, you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll never have, and you want to desire this experience, the kisses of his mouth, it starts by you giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you to give your life to Christ. Repeat, just repeat after me, Father, from today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I am a sinner. I give my life to you. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord and believe from my heart that God raised you from the dead and forgive me of all my sins. I choose to be a child of God and I'm a child of God because I've received Jesus Christ into my heart in Jesus' name. You're born again. You're born again. And now you're beginning to have 
that experience of a mouth-to-mouth, a face-to-face experience, the kisses of his mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, this is very important. And I hope that this is going to teach you intimacy, that every time you come to the presence, every time you go to church, you're actually going to have this experience, the kisses of his mouth. And as you do that, I can guarantee you that it will lead to the other, where you yourself will say, I've had your kisses, now draw me to your chambers, Jesus. Draw me to your bed. And what happens in the bed? We shall see that next week, because the best is yet to come. God bless you. Bye-bye.